Hi, this is Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, I'm going to talk about phosphates. Now, previously, if you go back into all the videos that I've done, I have done a couple of them when it comes to phosphates and nitrates. And I've explained uh, basic stuff about them. But today's video, it's a little different. It's a different approach. Today, what I'm going to talk about is when, why do you have high phosphates? So I'm going to talk about what actually triggers or causes phosphates to go up. And then once you learn that, and once you see what it uh, causes it to go up, then different remedies, uh, simple things that you can do to actually lower and monitor the phosphates. So I hope you enjoy the video, you find it interesting, but before I start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up and smash the notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into it and check it out. Okay, so let's start by uh, explaining actually that just about any organic substance can break down and release phosphate into your aquarium. Things like fish waste, or in other words, fish poop, coral slime, leftover food, detritus, and dead algae cells are all very common and natural sources of phosphorus in your aquarium. Even your tap water is also another potential source of phosphates. Now, I do have an uh, RODI system, and I do check my uh, DI, uh, especially the DI when I see that the TDS goes up it, well, it, it should read zero. I have a way where I can show uh, before the water goes into the RODI and then afterwards. And usually here in Orlando or in the area that I uh, live, shall we call it, it's usually close to 200 uh, TDS. But then, you know, I double check and then when I go to the water coming out to uh, the containers that I have, it should be zero. It can go up to about maybe two or three TDS, some even say four. I disagree with that. I'd say no more than two or three when then you have to change your uh, filter elements. Now, one thing before I go to the other uh, bullet point is that when you check phosphates, I mean, you don't have to do this every time. I'm, I'm checking uh, my water chemistry weekly People that follow me and see previous videos will notice that I say this. But what you all out there should start doing also is check your phosphates on your um, produced water, you know, your RODI, and see where it's at to make sure that you're not introducing phosphates when you do your prepared water into the tank, besides what I just mentioned you know, the fish waste, coral slime, and on and on and on, you know, leftover food, detritus. Now, when it comes to the optimal phosphate level, especially for reef tanks, it is considered to be around, I would say, 0 0.05 ppms. That's the, shall we call the acceptable level. And then the upper level, of phosphates should be 0 0.1, 0, of course, ppms as well. Now, that kind of is debatable, and I'll tell you why. Uh, each reef behaves different. I've mentioned this before on many, many previous videos that what might work for me might not work for you or another person. So, like, for instance, uh, in this aquarium, in this uh, mixed reef that you're looking at right now 
as I'm shooting the video as I speak. Uh, Mix Reefs, upon research, talking to everybody else, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is what I actually do before I shoot these actual videos. They say that for a mixed reef, it can be 0 0.10, like I mentioned right now, and you can even go a little higher, but you should keep it around 0 0.1. Now, that necessarily is not completely, completely true. Again, it depends on your reef, the way it behaves. Each reef behaves different. So like, let's say if you're running, uh, let's say 0 0.15 or even 0 0.20, and you observe the uh, tank, and you see by what I mean observing the tank, I mean looking for algae. And look at the, at the corals, the behavior of the corals. And you see that you don't have algae blooming because phosphates, certain high level of phosphates will start to uh, create algae. And you'll, you'll see that. You'll notice it in the substrate and in your rocks. So if you see that that's not happening, your corals are doing fine or doing great and your fish, then you can run with that actual phosphate level that you might have. So when I talk about these uh, targets, like in this case, between uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.10, uh, that's the target. But not necessarily these beautiful reefs that you see out there on YouTube and even in person, not necessarily may they or might they uh, be running at these levels. They might be running zero uh, phosphates, but yet that's probably because the corals already consumed the phosphates. But you always should, uh, you know, when you're uh, checking, uh, when you're doing tests, no matter if, yes, it's common that if you, if you find um, there's no, no reading on phosphates, uh, yeah, it, it commonly dictates that the corals have consumed it. There was phosphates because corals do need phosphates, and they might have consumed it already. But when you do a test, you should see a traceable amount of phosphates. You should have at least uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, at least that. I mean, a trace amount. Now, too high of PO4s. Now, for argument's sake, I'm going to be switching uh, the, the terminology. Uh, phosphates is also uh, in chemistry levels PO4. So now I'm going to switch to using PO4. Um, too high of a PO4 can actually kill corals, especially SPS. Yet, LPS corals and soft corals as well can tolerate higher PO4 than, of course, mention SPS. So uh, what I'm saying here is that high levels of phosphates will actually kill SPS, especially acros. But yet, um, when it comes to um, leather corals, you know, like uh, LPS, softies and all that, they can tolerate higher uh, phosphates with no, no problem whatsoever. Now, one thing that I found out, and I've mentioned this way back in previous uh, videos, how to actually regulate nitrates and phosphates with uh, the um, introduction or addition, shall we call it, of foods. Well, uh, pellet foods uh, can also raise your PO4 levels drastically, uh, depending, of course, of the amount of pellet foods that you're uh, introducing to your reef. When it comes me to feeding, I've been feeding uh, pellet foods in the morning and then I switch to frozen foods to mice shrimp. And then in the evenings, I go ahead and I feed um, reef mix by worldwide coral, which is actually a, a blend of, of fish and scallops and on and on, you know, in uh, crustacean foods. But now, because I did have, and I, I personally have a little issue with 
phosphates being a little high for this tank. I dropped the reef mix and I also dropped the pellet food. So now what I'm only feeding uh, once a day is the mysis shrimp. Now, in general, in general, uh, heavy feeding as a whole, what I just mentioned, uh, my regimen of feeding um, my reef can actually raise your PO4s. So not necessarily is it, is it just uh, dropping uh, your pellet foods, but in general, if you feed a lot of frozen foods or, or the reef mix by worldwide coral, it can still raise your phosphates. Now, high phosphates, high, you know, PO4s, when it comes to the SPS, especially acros, it can actually brown them. Um, I, have, I have had that happen to me, and I, I know what it looks like. So you might get from your LFS beautiful SPS, uh, beautiful acros, and because your phosphates might not be in check, might be a bit high, they will actually brown out. And as I mentioned uh, previously, high PO4s can cause algae. So you have to be looking out for that. Now, what I'm going to talk about next is things to uh, try to bring it down to your acceptable level in your tank. Number one, of course, very common for everybody, water changes. If you do, if, if you see that your PO4s are a bit high, which I have experienced that, what did I start to do? More frequently, water changes. Then the next thing, of course, protein skimming. Uh, in order for me to raise my, nutri my uh, nutrients a little bit because my NO3, which is uh, nitrates, were a little low, uh, I, I would uh, keep the protein skimmer off and then at night, before I go to bed, I would turn it on and then turn it off in the morning. But since my PO4 is a bit high, then I'm running the protein skimmer 24-7. So protein skimming is another thing to actually try. And then the third thing, the third thing uh, of course, is reduce uh, fish feeding, which I just mentioned uh, previously not um, too long ago. So like in my case, and in other people's case, if, you're, um, if your PO4 is a bit high, what they recommend, and I recommend also, is to cut back in the feeding. So, of course, I stop the pellet foods, and I cut back on the mice shrimp, the frozen food, and I stopped also the reef mix. Now, what's going to happen is when I see that uh, PO4 is a bit low, then I'll resume the pellet foods, but not too much, just a bit less. And then, of course, a final thing is to, uh, when it comes to um, lowering your phosphates, well, you should uh, actually use a phosphate remover, which what I use is the raw phos. Now, if possible, you should actually use it in a reactor. Uh, raw phos and other products that you have there to lowering phosphates, you can either put them on a filter sock and then put it um, on your, in my case, on the media basket um, as a pre-filter or in the middle or which, whichever you so desire. But the most effective, effective uh, form is to actually use it on a reactor. And what I'm using is raw phos. That's the most excellent top of the line phosphate remover that you can actually use. And then before I close the video, one final note of all this um, brainstorming the issue. Although, as mentioned above, the ideal PO4 can differ from reef to reef. And what may be ideal for one reef may not be for another. You should monitor you know, your PO4 by testing, in my case, weekly, and as I mentioned before, observation of your reef. That's very crucial and very important. Well, there it is. I hope you found it educational and funny and you actually learned something from this video. Uh, before I close the video, I thought I'd show you how it looks. This is the roll foss. This is what I actually use 
It's excellent. I highly recommend it. Uh, there's other products out there as phosphate uh, removers, but everybody recommends it. And um, living proof uh, that I use it. I uh, I, I use it on the uh, reactor since I do have a reactor for this tank. So I hope you like the video. And like I said and said before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up and smash that notification button. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thanks for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.